I have a question about when to turn on our second chiller. From my experience, I told them, probably speaking to a their automation team or a automation team or the customer, somebody, I uh, told them that until we reach approximately 90 to 95% of FLA, uh, as well as not deviating off of set points. So he's wanting to look at both. Uh, I also told them to keep in mind the time and the temperature outside. And if it gets to 90% at 330 to 530, uh, probably okay. But if it's in the evening, it gets to 90 uh, and at 10 a.m., uh, then probably probably okay to turn on the second one he says that uh, they've got two two 1000 ton yks in the plant they're just trying to determine uh when is the optimal time and just my opinion to bring on that secondary chiller the lag chiller it'd be another way to say that so while doing it the way described there now i'm not the best reader in the world so if it's a little choppy i'm also kind of trying to paraphrase whatnot you can control it that way but it's a fairly complicated way to go about that and to be honest i wouldn't that's not the way i have done it in the past and i've had the best success so uh the way i would approach this if i was trying to control a lead lag system i would have my automation monitoring the leaving uh, loop temperature for the, the main loop itself, not even necessarily the, the equipment or the chiller, even though you could, uh, you, you could pull those those readings out of through the say back net or Modbus into the controller. Um, I, I would like the, the control system, the automation system to monitor the loop temperature for set point. So for an example, if my set point was 45 degrees, then if I needed a really tight control and it was a fairly critical situation, then I might set a, a one degree dead band either way. So if I exceeded 46 degrees and let's say in a normal scenario, if I exceeded 46 for more than 30 minutes and it's a continuous 46, so I stayed above 46 degrees on that loop uh, for, for more than uh, 30 minutes, then I would want to bring my lag chiller in and let it come alongside and try to pull that loop back down. Now, a, and then if I got down one degree below, so if I got lower than uh, 44 with a 45 set point, then I would then know that I could probably drop that lag chiller back out and everything return back to normal. And I would just let the two stage from there, from that forward. And I will say that a, a lot of manufacturers this is how they tune their own internal controls so the chiller is monitoring leaving water and if compressor one uh, gets to where it can't handle the the leaving water output for a set period of time 5 10 15 minutes whatever the case may be if it sees that and then it'll start to bring in the next compressor and then they'll stage a second compressor up to join it uh, and this is so this is true even for a lot of how the manufacturers set up their own uh, duplex style um, uh, uh, chillers, you know, the duplex being multi multi compressor, whether it's a single circuit, separate circuit, either way, multi centrifugal compressor duplex chillers. A lot of times that's how they're going to be controlled anyway. Now, again, depending on how tight of a window you're trying to operate in, whether or not you're trying to do this in a really critical environment or not more than likely you're not especially with a question like this so for me 30 minutes is a very reasonable time and it keeps every anything from reacting or overreacting at that um, but if you really wanted to cut that down 10 15 minutes would still be fairly reasonable if we exceed our threshold by that much then it's time to stage up or down the lag chiller now, you, you could cut that down even further if you really wanted to. You just start to risk just natural fluctuations that happen anyway. So you could end up hurting your efficiency if that is your primary goal. Staging it based off of the, the FLA or RLA, it's not that that method can't work, but that's a, it's a very arbitrary a number because a few things affect that number and 
the load itself now if you have a very stable load then that number is probably going to be consistent enough it'll be fine but the moment you start dealing with any kind of surging or if say head pressure conditions start to form and it's affecting how the chiller can run or it's trying to stay off of that surge line there's several things that could come into play that influences that fla that setting that as your threshold could cause you some issues and i just personally wouldn't suggest that and then trying to add the extra schedule of time in there uh, could really just further complicate okay. the when the automation needs to stage up or stage down one of the the best things we can do is try to find the simplest methods like what is what is the bare bones most basic way to go about this so that it doesn't get over complicated while it's trying to run or operate uh, when the more complicated things are the more risk there is at it not working and the more skill you have to have as the technician or as the programmer in order to make that complicated sequence actually function in the first place so for me and just my opinion uh, doing the dead band through the automation on just the loop temperature and then putting a delay timer on there is, is going to be the the simplest way about it and this is think of it this way too this is the same way we would control compressor staging on an rtu it's just that instead of looking at supply air temperature we're looking at chillers and just like we have a lead compressor with an rtu we have lead a lead chiller with a lag chiller or a lag compressor and I'm, we're we're staging based off of leaving water so let's make everything based off of leaving water and then allow allow the the chillers or the equipment to stage itself up and down accordingly there's been some plants where i had that on the i had a um a two degree on the lag stage up but nothing on the lag stage down the moment i got past the set point where i was lower than set point for the delay so i think i was still using a 20 25 minute delay somewhere in there i still had the delay in place but once i got down past my set point for that period of time then i would stage down the lag instead of having to to let it go beyond set point you know the one or two degrees of the dead band so i want to say thank you to today's video sponsor which is csg compressor solutions group based out of houston texas they've also got a shop in dfw serving the texas area and they also can provide you compressor service nationally they're a great group of guys They've done a really good job with just getting their information out there. They try to really invest into training in this industry and just supporting the contractors. Reach out to Jake with any questions you have. He'll be able to take care of you, be able to help you out. They do full service and rebuilds on screw compressors and semi-hermetic recips. They've been a great friend of the channel. They've been a great friend of mine. I look forward to working with them for a long time to come. Anyway. Just some of my thoughts. Uh, this is a Q&A thing I've been thinking about quite a bit recently. I decided that, you know, I'm here at the airport waiting on stuff to my flights and stuff. Anyway, I thought I'd come in here and check it out. By the way, if you don't know, I have an online academy called chilleracademy.com. I'd really love to take you over there, get you some training, get to work with you, and help you learn these types of concepts and things. These are stuff that is in the academy. These are basic, fundamental uh, practices and procedures and how we stage and operate uh, plants and equipment. All of this is the kind of information that is in Chiller Academy. If you're interested in growing and developing, then uh, this would be a perfect course for you. And if you found this video helpful in any way with that, MTT, make the time for your family, for your spouse, for your kids. I'll see you all around.